this is my de Havilland Vagabond and I thought I would make a video showing some of the changes that I'm going to make this is Coco um, I'm assuming that these things on the side here this one and this one uh, something to do with a uh, working for a trapeze um, I don't use such a thing I'm more of a cruiser uh, so I'm going to actually remove those to get them out of the way particularly because when I slid off the boat uh, when coming back into the beach at one point in time this one caught on my pants ripped the butt out of my shorts and pretty much tore me a new butthole um, so those things are just quite dangerous and in a bad spot you can see here actually how things have been moved around a lot here's some old screw holes here and a pair of old screw holes here more along here so there's been a lot of work here moving stuff around I figure if I just take things out fill up the holes with uh, either epoxy or an epoxy glue then we should be right to go I also do need to make some more repairs here where this is the top level repair where I accidentally hit the um, uh, the wharf in quite a, a high swell and it sort of cracked up the side and you can see if we come down under here that I still need to repair the underside and we've got a little bit of a leak I think probably around where another modification has been made which was the um, Venturi vent here um, I need to do some patching around there because it does seem to get a bit of water inside between the two shells of uh, fiberglass um, and the other modification I want to make or rather one I've made is this device here which um, it just sits down inside what was originally a long centerboard case now we're using a dagger board as you can see there and it only really takes up half the space so this allows me to um, take up the rest of the space jam it at a certain height either up or down um, and I figure It'll double, if I slide this forward, to here as a seat when I want to row to leverage these row locks which someone's added at some point in time, which is a nice little change. Uh, so I'm going to make some oars out of a bit of 90 by 45 framing timber um, and see how we go from there. So this series of videos is just about the changes I'm making here in the uh, winter um, non-sailing time within Melbourne. So let's see how we go. Okay, well, I managed to get these off at the back here. Um, I did have to resort to, well, actually, I didn't because I did resort to using the grinder at one point. You can see I did a little bit of damage to this um, particular, what do you call that, a block. Um, but found that once I used a bit of, um, a couple of pliers, things were able to unscrew, not because they unscrewed, just because the um, old uh, brass screws here pretty much all snapped. Um, so that leaves me with a couple of spare parts here, which I may well find a use for at some point. Okay, as you can see, I've filled these in. Uh, this is slumped a little bit while it was um, drying, because it's not the warmest weather at the moment. And as a result, there's a little bit of an indentation, but I can fill those up with a little bit more thickened epoxy. You can see... Um, I actually covered these over because I think that was just a bronze cut off, um, it looked like at least. Maybe the bronze cut off screws or something, I'm not sure. Um, so anyway, I just gave those a little bit of a seal. You can see this one here has been filled up. Um, again, slumped a little bit, but not too bad. Um, the next thing I also need to resolve is the hiking straps, I think they're called. Um, so at some point in time, you can see they're a bit kind of worn these connections here at some point in time this one had broken off and it was just filled with kind of some putty so what I did was poke out the sort of soft putty there I still haven't worked out a solution for these with a bit of yanking I found that the one at the front here also came off um, and so I've resolved to actually just remove them all and work out a different solution so you can see here I drilled out and um, for the one that's actually missing, which is this back one here, I'm going to make a little bracket out of this aluminium 3mm plate here. Um, and we'll work out a solution. I'm just not quite sure how to fix these down, given that 
I sort of need something that's going to go inside there and expand um, and create a bit of a backing plate when I push it through the holes of the connector here. Um, so I'm going to need to give that some more thought. Anyway, uh, that's the status of uh, renovations for the moment. So I've drilled some extra holes in these brackets here and have roughed up the underneath with a bit of sandpaper and that sort of thing. Um, essentially to ensure that I've got three forms of fixing these to the boat. So if you take a look at the ones that I've actually applied here, um, I've used epoxy underneath and effectively that should key into the scratching from the sanding underneath and glue it to the fiberglass. Um, not a lot of faith in that because they're two different materials and I'm not sure how well stainless steel will glue. But I also then made sure epoxy came up through these holes and formed blobs on the top. And that effectively creates some lugs to lock it from above. And then I've applied uh, stainless steel, um, and I think that will be stronger actually this time, stainless steel rivets and covered those over to smooth them off um, so that they are effectively acting as lugs below. Um, so we've got three forms holding that on. They should be tough as nails now and um, those should not be going anywhere. So I've been making some oars here for the boat, um, which these have been just, I guess, shaped out of a, uh, a 90 by 45 that I cut in half lengthways and here's the other piece uh, shaped to take the well, tapered I guess to take the uh, to support the blade at the end and a little slot there just to help hold it so this one you can see I haven't shaped down and a little bit of marine ply which will um, just sit in like so uh, and we'll then be able to row the boat when there is no wind so let's see how those turn out I've made the blades a little bit bigger than my kayak paddle um, as you can see use that as a bit of a basis so let's see how they turn out okay so I have received my buckles stainless steel buckles from boat warehouse over the weekend which has allowed me to finish off the hiking straps I've only run them to here, this bar which runs sort of midships, uh, whereas previously they went all the way to the front. Um, I'm typically only going to be the one sailing here, so I think that's fine, and I didn't have enough of the webbing to go the full length. I can always change it at a, a later date if I buy a new roll. Some of the other changes I've done on here was to fix on... Well, with a temporary solution here, I'll get a proper saddle at some point, but a line of shock cord here and a little notch on my tiller, which lets me lock that in place. And that enables me to track straight with the tiller down when paddling um, and also to sail hands-free at any time that I wish to do so. Uh, I've also given a good coat of epoxy to the paddles which I made here um, and bought some ore locks. Now by a happy coincidence the point here where the shrouds fix on and where the um, rope for the, uh, the jib comes through, if I'm not using the jib I can use this to basically lock the, um, the paddles in place so that's worked out rather well and that's how they would sit on the boat. Um, so that's the changes I'm going to make in this sort of batch. Hopefully I can get out on the water very soon and give this a try.